Hey, what's up, boys? In today's video, I rated all of Spy's weapons in TF2. I did not include any of the reskins, because that would not have made any sense if I did. I have about 900 hours of Spy, and this tier list is from my own experience within the game. And remember, they are my own opinions. I would also like to point out that I am rating Spy's weapons through the casual game experience, because that is where I have most of my hours as Spy. If you enjoy this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So the first weapon on this tier list is the Ambassador. Now, this is one of the more controversial ones, I think. Um, I would actually put this in A tier, which is a bit higher than I think most of you guys would have thought. Uh, the reason I'm putting it in A tier and not B tier um, is because it's one of the most hard to use and the highest skill gap weapons there is as spy. And what I mean by this is that if you have good aim, you can basically kill entire lobbies with it. Um, I would actually have put this in uh, S tier uh, before the Jungle Inferno update. And for those of you guys who don't know what happened in the Jungle Inferno update, that was when the Ambassador got nerfed, where the Ambassador could, if you hit a successful uh, headshot on an enemy, you dealt 102 damage, uh, and it didn't matter what distance. But that got um, nerfed, and now it deals less damage the further away from the enemy. So I'll put this in A tier. Next up, we have the Big Earner. I feel like this one, I enjoy it a lot, but if you compare it with any of the other knives, I would put it in B tier. And the reason I'm putting it in B tier is that you only have 100 health. And yes, you do get the speed boost whenever you back up an enemy, but if you only have 100 health to begin with, like there's a very big chance that you will die if you run into a decent player in a casual game. Um, you can get one shot by all of the most pipes, the Iron Bomber, the Grenade Launcher, the Loose Cannon if you get a Double Dunk, and also the Lock and Load. So that's why I put this in B tier. Now this one, the Cloak and Dagger, I'm actually gonna um, create a video um, uh, on the channel uh, to explain why my choice is my choice, but I would actually put this in D tier. I never use the Cloak and Dagger, like I never, never, ever use it, because I think the stock watch is just 10 times more effective. Um, maybe it has something to do with my playstyle. I'm a little bit more like uh, Mr. Paladin, and I'm not playing as much flashy playstyle as TF2 Clown, Craze, or uh, Swipes. And the cloak and dagger is just not very fun for me to play with. And the fact that you like have to sit still doesn't really... I don't really like that aspect of Spy where you just sit still an entire game and wait for the perfect moment to strike. So yeah, I would put this in D tier. The Kunai though. Like, everyone would know this one. That is going in S tier. Kunai is by far the most strong knife, like, if you look in a casual point of view. The Kunai, upon a successful backstab, you gain all the health from the victim. Which means after backstab you can get up to 205 health. I don't know, 210, 205 health. That's just insanely strong. You could get away with so much if you get a backstab. And I don't really know, exp and I don't have to explain why I think this is S tier. Okay, now the Dead Ringer. Maybe some of you will question this one here, but I would actually put the Dead Ringer in A tier. And the reason I will put it in, in uh, A tier is because it is very situational, in my opinion at least. And it also has something to do with that. I'm more like Mr. Paladin. I like playing with the in in, in this watch more, which I can use all the time. This I cannot use all the time. This is more when I compare with I, I mostly play the Dead Ringer uh, when I'm playing with the Kunai and Ambassador, or when I'm just playing some Gun Spy with the Ambassador and the Spicicle. I will put the Dead Ringer in A tier. Now the Diamondback. I actually don't play a lot with the Diamondback. But the times I do play with the Diamondback, I destroy entire lobbies. So yeah, I would put this in S tier. And just quickly to explain why. Well, when you backstab an enemy, you gain one critical uh, hit. And when you sap uh, buildings, that could be sentries, dispensers, and teleporters, you will also get one crit uh, on each building uh, destroyed. So you basically get crits for doing what a spy is supposed to do. So yeah, that's why I put it in S tier. It's insanely strong. And each critical hit, you know, does 102 damage. Um, so that's very, yeah, very strong. Even though that I don't use it as much. And now the Enforcer. Another weapon as the Cloak and Dagger, uh, which I never use. 
And this Enforcer is shit. It's so bad, in my opinion. Like, all the other choices. Um, the Diamondback, the Ambassador, and the Les Ronchers and the Revolver are much better. The Enforcer is only good if you are if you have to kill low health enemies that have maybe under 50, 60 HP, where you deal more damage than the stock revolver if you are disguised. But I never feel like I'm in that situation anyways, and I would rather go for, go for the backstab instead of shooting them down. Um, so yeah, not really a big fan of the Enforcer. And now, the Invest Watch. Everyone of you know what I'm going to put the Invest Watch in if you've watched basically all my videos. I'm putting this in S tier. And the reason I put this in the S tier is that I love play pairing the Invest Watch with the Les Rangers. So I can basically stay invisible for forever, basically. Uh, that's the power of the Les Rangers and the Invest Watch combined. Uh, this thing, you know, the stock watch, I don't really know. I, I don't personally see why the Dead Ringer or the Cloaking Dagger should be better in it. The Dead Ringer becomes better than the Invest Watch in some uh, situations. And that's why I explained the Dead Ringer is situational. But the Invest Watch is just overall so strong. The Stock Knife. Okay, so I have seen a lot of other uh, spy weapons tier list on this. And they have put it in S tier. And I'm not going to put it in S tier. I'm going to put this in A tier. Because what I like to do is that I compare them. I compare uh, the knife with all the other knives. So the Stock Knife is better than the Big Earner. But it is much worse than the Kunai. If... If you play casual matchmaking. Um, this changes if you play competitive, but I will make a different video on that. But the reason why I put the stock watch here is just the kunai is better. Like, if you get a backstab with the kunai, you have 200 health, which means you can escape much easier. If you get a backstab with the stock watch, you still have a good chance of, of surviving if you know what you're doing. But you only have 125 health. Um, yeah, that's why, basically. And now the Les Rongers. A lot of you guys know uh, where I will put this also. Uh, if you've seen my videos. I think the only times I use another revolver than this is when I'm bored. I play mostly with the Les Rongers and the Ambassador. But I will put this in S tier. This combined with both the Invest Watch, the Dead Ringer and the Cloak and Dagger is insanely strong. Like, it's a bit boring sometimes because you only re rely on your knife. With that said, you can use your Les Rongers, but it just deals less damage. But overall, this is insanely strong. The fact that you can stay in invisible for forever, basically. Perfect men weapon for spy. Okay, the next one. The Red Sap Taper. Or how the f ever you pronounce that. I don't know. Uh, so I never used this. I'm putting this in D tier. I don't have to explain why. It's just very bad, I guess. I don't like it. It's the same with the Cloak and Dagger and the Enforcer. I never used these, th these three weapons at all. Now the Revolver. This one here, I'm going to put in S tier. I'm gonna compare it with the Les Rongers and the Diamondback. They are all good for different purposes. The Diamondback for playing like very kind of aggressive. And also you can get out of some pretty difficult situations um, if, if you have crits. Le, Les Rongers, you basically never have to use it. But if you have it equipped, you will never die if you're a good spy. And the Revolver deals so much damage. It shoots fast. It deals a lot of damage. It's more overpowered than you might think. You, sh you guys watching this video should probably watch the revolver or should, yeah, use it a lot more than you're doing right now. Like, it's very good for practice at least. So yeah, I, I would put this in S tier. The Zapper, I know this one should be S tier if, because I said before that I would compare it with the Red Zapper. But I'm going to put this in B tier. And the reason for that is that I would like to compare the Zapper with other weapons within the game that takes out Sentrinists. If you have a Sentry, I'm not sh quite sure how long it, uh, it takes for the Sentry to get destroyed, but it's much easier for a Demo Man using the Lock and Load or the Iron Bomber to take out a Sentrinist. Uh, or it is for a Soldier using the Direct Hit or the Normal Rocket Launcher to kill a, a Sentry. And also for a Heavy using the Minigun. That's where I feel like the Zapper is not that great. That's only in casual matchmaking, of course. If you use this in, in competitive, it gets higher on the tier list. But more on that in another day. So the next knife on the tier list is the Spicicle. So this one, I don't know if it's going to surprise a lot of you guys, but I would actually say that it's even better than the stock knife. And hear me out. I feel like the fact that you can escape from Pyros, and I know 
Like, you can look at this at both uh, both sides, that it's bad that you lose your knife uh, to Pyros, but I would say that it's a good thing, because it makes so that it's, it's easier for you to escape. Imagine you back up uh, a heavy with the bicycle and there's a Pyro behind you, and you have it equipped with the Les Rongers and the Invis Watch, or just another revolver. That means you can get out alive, and there's a big chance that you would have died if you were to use the stock knife, and... Also, it's just so damn satisfying to kill people with this bicycle, leaving back ice uh, sculptures of the enemies. So I would say that the uh, bicycle uh, is better than the uh, stock knife, but it's not on the same level as the kunai. No knife will ever be as strong as the kunai. And now for the final, and I feel like the most controversial knife in the game, I would put this in A tier. And I would actually say... My two most favorite knives to play with are the Kunai and the Your Eternal Reward. Now, I don't think the Your Eternal Reward is on the same level or is as good as the Kunai, but I would say that the Your Eternal Reward is the second most uh, powerful knife in the game. Um, and that's because if you're playing in a casual lobby and you get a backstab and you are decent at getting backstabs and, you're, and you don't fail as many backstabs, you can kill seven or eight enemies in a row on a card. Like, this thing is so strong. If you are good at uh, acting as a spy should be, you can get some pretty insane clips with this knife. And um, it also kind of reminds me more of how spies supposed to be played. I know that shouldn't really change the my opinion on where to put it, but when you play with the your eternal reward, you automatically get better at uh, acting like the enemies, if that makes sense. Um, so that's why I've put it here. So that is much better than the... Uh, okay, I wouldn't say that it's much better than the Spicicle and the Stock Knife, but it is st uh, better still. It is better. So that's why I've put it here. And uh, yeah, that is my uh, tier list of the Spice's weapons. Hope you boys enjoyed this video. See you guys.